Well, it's been about uh, two months since we started this wine. And I think 42 days since we transferred it into the secondary fermenter right here. And uh, if we look at the airlock, you can see that it's pretty much done bubbling. I mean, it's not releasing gas at any rate that we can see. Uh, if we look closely at the top of the wine, we don't see it fizzing very much. There's a slight bit of uh, carbonation there, but it's not much. And then we look at the bottom, what you see is you see uh, remaining fruit particles and uh, dormant yeast. So as the alcohol concentration goes up, the yeast begin to go dormant. Um, basically puts them to sleep. So I think it's a good time to rack this wine. Uh, check the gravity, rack it, and I think it might be almost ready to drink by Thanksgiving next week. Well, how do we rack it? Well, we got to make sure we got a another clean uh, carboy to rack it into. So here I'm washing this one out, making sure it's clean. I actually uh, had a little bleach water in it last week to make sure it was sterile. Now we're going to do a final rinse. Alright, to rack this wine what we need is we need a, some tubing on a stick. And what we want to do is check how deep that lees is on the bottom. And we want to adjust the bottom of our stick because we don't want to siphon up, the, we want to leave the lees there take the clean wine off the top so I'm gonna guess about that depth do the job okay I almost forgot we gotta check the specific gravity of this to make sure it is truly almost done where we want it to be and that it hasn't gotten stuck so I'm taking a sample right now drop the uh, hygrometer in there and I can see that it is actually a little below our target gravity, which is awesome. So this wine is going to have a good balance, I believe. All right, now hopefully by taking that sample, I didn't stir up the lees too much. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the uh, siphon tube in there and gently so I don't stir up the lees. And you can see I used a little wedge there to hold that stick vertical in the wine. And we're going to need to gently start the siphon into our clean carboy. Here it comes. Okay. So what we're doing is we're siphoning off the clear wine, leaving the junk on the bottom of the other barrel. All right. I don't see a whole lot of fizz there, so it looks like the wine is pretty much done uh, fermenting. Okay, there we go. The siphon action stopped. We've got the lees down here, and we got clear wine down here. So, what do we do with this stuff here? Well, one thing we, we could dump it out, but we can also use it as a starter for our next batch of wine because it's full of yeast. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save that in a smaller bottle. Okay, there's my jug of starter. All right, so now what do we got? Now we got a carboy full of beautifully clear wine there. So what are we going to do with that? Well, we could let it age for a while, mellow it out, probably taste a little better. Maybe a little more uh, sediment will fall out. It'll clear some more. We could taste it. 
So, I poured a glass here, siphoned off a glass for us to look at. Looks pretty nice, nice and clear. Do little tasters on that. Hmm, a little on the tart side. May warn me that maybe not all the grapes were ripe, as ripe as they could be. But tastes like it's got a good balance, not too sweet, not too dry. So I think what we'll do is I'm going to go ahead and bottle some for Thanksgiving. So there you go, how to make wine part two.